What comes to mind when you think of confession? You might be feeling like, I'm afraid. What's the priest going to think of me? Or, since God loves me and forgives me, do I really need to tell my sins to a priest? Or maybe, if I go to confession, I'll feel awkward telling the priest everything, so maybe I should just wait. Well, it's time to understand that these distractions are keeping us away from the healing and saving graces that come from this incredible sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus loves to forgive us. He wants to reconcile us with our Father, a relationship broken through sin. Remember, reconciling our relationship with God was Jesus' idea in the first place. And since God created us, He knows what will really bring us peace. When we are set free from our burdens and are forgiven and healed, we can truly be joyful again. And after we shed our sins in the confessional, we'll feel like a hundred pound weight is lifted off. And the best part is that Jesus loves to forgive. He's anxious to forgive. Will we give him that chance? That's not the case. 
in our thinking in today's world. We do not trust God anymore. We have taken God out of the picture. There is no need for God. God is not, as Nietzsche puts it, God is death. There's no need for it. Why would we want him? He is too restricted. He keeps us from being free. I like that. He keeps us from being free. In a real sense today, we look at what we think is freedom, and it is the opposite of freedom. It pushes us away from trust, pushes us away from, you, from being together as a community. It pushes us away from the understanding that we must learn to trust each other, instead of relying just solely on ourselves. We look around us. We ask ourselves why our churches are not full. We ask ourselves why is our faith suffering? And there's one of the reasons for it. There's no longer a community of faith. We are a community of individuals who sometimes think alike. Or more often than not, we think in all different directions. The unity of our faith has been broken. And it's not broken in the words that we say, but in the trust that we, that we give. If you can't trust your pastor, then you're not going to do anything wrong or with it. If you don't trust your neighbor, you're not going to help that person in anything that they need to do. If you don't even trust your family, you're not going to trust that person because you cannot help them because you feel there is no trust. That's what this gospel is about. This gospel is about the understanding of trust. If you trust in God, then everything else around you becomes part of what it is that you are. And that particular part of you is indeed the understanding of who Christ is in our lives. We all come to Mass on a Sunday. We worship together. But we walk away afterwards. And there is no more. We have daily Mass here every day. The amount of people that come to daily mass is three. Every day. And the only reason those three are there is because one of them is the sacristan, the other is the secretary, and the other is me saying mass. I often wonder what is wrong. Trust begins with an understanding of faith. If we don't have faith, and we've lost our faith so far, then everything else breaks down around it. Our spiritual lives are in very much danger in this world is completely in danger. We're not looking at it. We don't see it. We turn around and say, it's okay, Father, don't worry about it. Pray about it. But I'm praying. But it doesn't seem to be working. Then I have to ask why. It's a big question. What is wrong in today's world that we cannot give time to our Lord? <coughs> we cannot share our faith with others. 
And that is obvious. Especially when we look at our younger people today. They are not being taught their faith. We have a few people who are burning themselves out trying to teach them. But nobody is this. We're losing those people because they are feeling the pressure. They don't know how to handle it. They've lost the voice of God. Their voice is like shouting in the wilderness. They repeat and repeat and repeat. Nobody listens. Then we wonder why our faith is not doing as well as it should. Our voice, which are supposed to be strong, but I say it's not that strong. Our voices, which are supposed to be strong in faith, is no longer strong. Sounds like me right now. It's weak. And while it's weak, it becomes vulnerable. And when it becomes vulnerable, it becomes afraid. And once it becomes afraid, it passes away. We ask ourselves that question. Are we following the advice of God? Or are we afraid? Are we just whispering? I would say we're whistling. I don't know the answers. I would love to have them. I know that it's tough in this world. And I know that most of you find it very hard to be able to learn, to teach, and to be part of this system. But we need your help. We need your faith to continue to grow. If we don't, <coughs> what's the point? St. Ambrose once wrote that if one is afraid to speak of their faith, then faith will overtake them. Christ. He's not talking about the faith of Christ. He's talking about the faith of fear. In a real sense, that's what's happening in our world. We are no longer able or willing, I think, to stand up for our faith. Our faith, is, our faith has become a facade. There is nothing called foundation to it. We need to change that. And it needs to begin here. Right here. In our little battle. We need to learn to pray. To come together in a community. Not just on a Sunday, or just for fellowship, but to come together in prayer. To come to daily mass if we can. To put together groups that will do prayer for the power, for the people within the power. To teach our young people our faith, not just by the book that we have, but through the example of what it is to be on our knees, as they say, in the land. <coughs> One cannot do it alone. God knows we try. But it's not easy. The voice of God is calling to you, calling out in the wilderness. He's looking to you to help him grow his church. Our church is changing. It's changing from what you were used to. 
what you understand is different to what it is today. And it's even going to get different and more different. And if you do not learn to change someone, you will pass away. Everything that you have will be taken from you in a way. I was reading Pope Francis's letter at exaltation on family. And it's an eye opener to what's going on in the world. And yet at the same time, because all I hear is nitpicking about, not from here by the way, but elsewhere. Instead of looking and saying, wait, what are we going to do about this? We nitpick it to that. We want to cling to what we have. But we're not able to see the future to what we need. That's what the voice is there for. That's why Jesus Christ is calling to you personally to help, to walk, to give, to understand, to be a prayerful person, and not just at home. Because I know many of you are prayerful at home. I know many of you practice your faith at home. But your community needs you to practice it here too. Your priest needs it. Not for several aspects. God needs us. He does. He needs us to be the people of God. To listen. To the It is here where you'll find the best marriage counselor, greatest healer, wisest teacher, and closest friend. It's a place where you'll escape the chaos of the world and find the lasting peace that only comes from God. Jesus is personally waiting to embrace you now with his divine mercy and healing love. Jesus is calling you home to his sacred heart today. I need your mercy. I need a savior. 